If you work with .NET and you regularly write tests, there's a high chance you've heard about the drama surrounding the mock library, which has been making big waves on the internet for the past two days. However, even if you don't work with .NET, the topic might not be relevant to you, but it could still be interesting because it's not so much about mock in particular, but about open source in general and our general approach to it. And that is a topic that, in my opinion, concerns virtually all developers. And in this video, I will briefly explain what happened, where the actual problem lies, and most importantly, I would like to comment on the whole thing from my personal point of view. With, uh, with that said, hello and welcome to this out of series developers special. What happened? Because you might not know Mock, let me briefly explain it so you can put everything in context. Mock is, as the name suggests, a mocking library for tests, which is quite popular among .NET developers. Quite popular means it has been downloaded almost half a billion times from NuGet. Even, uh, even though I rarely work with .NET these days, I have used Mock in the past and I remember it as a pretty good and sensible and reasonable library. Mock has been around for more than 10 years now and is primarily developed by a developer named Daniel Cazzolino. So far, so good. Daniel Cazzolino, like many others who develop open source, had been wondering for a while now how to make open source more sustainable, because everyone loves to use open source, but very few are willing to give something back in return, be it in the form of money, pull requests or anything else. Sadly, this doesn't concern individual developers as much. In my experience, they often give back, but rather larger companies. Despite their billion dollar budgets, they like to take without giving, often with rather thin excuses related to legal or compliance issues. It's a quite sad situation and we've made videos about it in the past. See for example the link here in the info card, but please note that this video is in German. Now, a while ago, Daniel Cazzolino thought it would be a good idea to more prominently encourage open source users to contribute financially for example, through GitHub sponsorship. And to this end, he developed another project called SponsorLink. And here's how SponsorLink works. Suppose you use a library that's open source and that library in turn uses SponsorLink. Now, every time you run a build of your project on your system, SponsorLink determines your email address. It does this by running a git command in the background, which is git config dash dash get user dot email. And if Git is not present or no email address is configured or you don't have network right now available, nothing happens. But if the call is successful, your obtained email address is hashed and sent to the SponsorLink backend on Azure. And there it's checked whether your email address is already among the library sponsors. And if yes, all is well, but if not, an appropriate message is displayed in the IDE, example given in Visual Studio, encouraging you to become a sponsor. So about a week ago, he integrated this tool into the new version 420 of Mock. And initially, it doesn't seem like such a big deal as he even pointed out that Mock now contains sponsor link. However, what he didn't do was get the consent of the users whose Git configuration he reads in this way. He also didn't get consent to send the email to the cloud. And yes, he didn't send it in plain text, but hashed it first using SHA 256, but we all know that a hash is only somewhat secure in this context because email addresses are simply not random. If I know someone's email, I can easily compute the hash as well and then start making my own requests against the sponsor link backend and that might not be entirely in line with data protection as the email address, which might even be reconstructable, which I put intentionally in air quotes, is definitely considered personal data and thus deserves particular protection. And this discussion quickly arose on Reddit and GitHub, implying that Mock now has a privacy issue based on the sponsor link dependency. And additionally, what made things even worse is that the sponsor link assembly is obfuscated, meaning it's not easy to verify in detail what actually is happening. The whole thing found a swift resolution as sponsor link was removed uh, with the update to Mock 4.22. However, now the complaints begin. How could he even? Why on earth did he do this? What the heck was he thinking? And so on. And yes, I understand that. Obviously, and this is not up for debate, the approach was not particularly clever. On the contrary. 
anyone could have seen that this move in this manner would backfire, probably. But I think it's way too easy to just bash Daniel Cazzolino now, because yes, he made a mistake or behaved inappropriately or whatever you want to call it. However, open source has a problem, especially when driven by individuals over the years. Typically, working on open source happens in the evenings, during free time, on weekends and on vacation. And those who develop open source potentially gift many other developers, not just with code, but with something, something even more valuable, their personal time. And how is this usually acknowledged? Right, not at all. People rudely complain about missing features, expect free support, and the last thing developers hear is an occasional thank you. Open source is largely a very thankless endeavor, and anyone now inclined to say, well, he didn't have to do it, you're oversimplifying. It's so easy from the anonymity, the anonymity of the internet without being in the situation to judge why someone does something, for what purpose someone does it, and so on. In the end, that statement is the highest form of ingratitude, a virtual kick when someone is already down. And to be honest, I can absolutely relate to him. Open source is a very thankless, crappy job that in 99.9% .9 of cases doesn't pay off at all. But out of a sense of duty, responsibility, ideals or whatever other reasons you might have, one stays involved as an author, always hoping that it's good enough that what you do makes some positive impact and most importantly always hoping that someday someone might think of just saying thank you. Nobody goes into open source intending to become a billionaire through it, but even a simple thank you is often too much to ask. And when you eventually consider how to monetize the project you've poured so much time into, and in this case we're talking years here, I find it anything but reprehensible. And yes, as I've said, the approach might have been smart, might not have been smart, but I can entirely relate to the motivation behind it. And before you go ahead and write a comment under this video that starts with but, do me a favor, pause for five seconds and think about when you last thanked someone for open source, paid them or contributed code. And if the answer is never, please think twice if your comment should actually start with the word but. That was strong words, but I needed to say it because I'm tired of the constant whining where demands are endlessly made on open source. We could be such a wonderful, constructive and creative community. But the question we must ask ourselves is, why aren't we? Why do we let such vital components that, as in this case, get downloaded half a billion times, leave all the responsibility and the associated burden on one single individual and not even manage to say thank you for it? Perhaps that's a question for the upcoming weekend, something for us all to reflect upon. What's your take on this? Please share your opinions and thoughts in the comments below. I'm eager to hear what comes up. And one last thing I'd like to note, I apologize if this video became a bit emotional. I personally wasted over 10 years of my life developing open source. Of course, from a technical point of view, it wasn't wasted and there was positive feedback. But I know the situation described in this video so well firsthand. I understand how disheartening and thankless it feels for open source authors and it's one of the reasons I've become very cautious about releasing my code as open source today. It's a story that's too one-sided and that won't work very well in the long run. However, of course, I wish you a pleasant Friday tomorrow, have a great weekend and see you on Sunday at 5 p.m. Central European time for our next regular video. Until then, take care, stay healthy and as always, have a nice day. Bye.